and, and values. Uh, you know, the, this step, color correcting everything, just like masking everything, it, it can take some serious time. Uh, masking especially, that's, you know, and it's really not interesting to watch. That's why I kind of am treating this map painting almost like a cooking show, like come back and everything's all baked or cooked and, um, but but it's because I want to get through every step of the process with you guys in this class and uh, and let you guys t take these these concepts and these um, steps and and play with them on your own as well because especially with color correction the pushing and pulling of levels that really it, it you speed up as you do it more and it really just requires a lot of practice and and trying different things and running into elements that are really difficult to color correct and, and you'll learn a lot from those and, and find new techniques from them. Uh, for this, you know, I've been trying to stick with just the, the basics of hue saturation, levels adjustments, and, uh, and a soft light layer. Um, and that can get you most of the way, but, uh, you, you know, you might have to find, uh, play with a couple different tools and, and one of them is just like how we used uh, blend if to to get our highlights where we wanted them. Um, I'll just do this so it's incredibly apparent. Um, but you know this sort of these tools, you know th this helps a lot when you really need to nail the the highlight colors of one image and really getting them to match. God, that looks hideous, but I eh, guess the point across. Uh, and we're actually going to use that tool quite a bit in this chapter uh, when we're adding lighting and, uh, and getting light direction in there. That's, that's really the next step with this is we're gonna get the atmosphere in so that we can get more of that feeling of depth. And that's really gonna help bring our colors together too. And, and then we're gonna add highlights into these to give it more of a directional light. So the first thing I wanna do uh, is, is get into the atmosphere. And I've done a little work to our color reference uh, th this was good. This was a cool, uh, I I'm liking this, but I just did a, a couple more adjustments um, to just bring it more into that. It's more desaturated, uh, but that's really, I want this to feel like a cold, desolate place. And, and one of the ways you do that is with a lack of color and, and saturation. And then I'm gonna bring in the color with, uh, with highlights and bring in that warm glow coming from the horizon and and little pings happening off of these rocks. So I'm, I'm gonna stick with uh, this new color reference and we're gonna use that, uh, especially when we're figuring out our, our um, atmosphere and what, what, our, what our levels should be when we're getting far back here. You know, when, again, using this levels adjustment on top of everything, when we crank those highlights all the way up and we look at our reference image and we see, you know, by, by this point, that main mountain's shadows are just gone. So we can use that to match uh, our main mountain over here. And actually, I'm just gonna do that right now. I'm gonna hide the deep background mountains for now so I can just focus on, on this, this main mountain here. And I'll create a new levels adjustment. And I'll just bring down those, bring down those shadows. If we take that away, you know, we can see right there what that's doing is just kicking it back in, in Z space. And I'll name this CC Atmo. I can just copy that over to the back. So that kind of just gets our, our values in the right place. Um, and, and then beyond that, we can actually create a new, new layer and paint atmosphere with a, with a soft brush. And I'll grab a, a color from the sky and just kind of softly paint kind of the low lying atmosphere. And I'll tone that down, tone down the opacity, just something like that. And I'll just copy that over. I don't need, to, I could just create a new layer. It's not like I'm copying any of the paint because I'm just going to control A and hit delete to delete all of, uh, all of that. 
um, but then add some kind of wrapping atmosphere in these back rocks. And I'm just tapping the brush, just subtle, subtle paint strokes just to add, add that. You can see how that just feels like we're going back in, in Z space in these mountains. And you can always push and pull it too, with, you know, just erasing with the big soft brush too. Um, especially when we want to like connect these rocks. Maybe over here a bit. That's pretty nice. It's looking looking pretty similar to um, to our reference image. We can always go back to the levels to kind of just compare. So I'm going to get that going with all of these layers before going into adding these warm highlights. So we have these deep background mountains. And sometimes you, you, you don't even need a, a levels adjustment sometimes. Uh, a lot of the time you can just get it all with a, with a soft brush. You know, something like that. And atmosphere, again, is another great way to emphasize your silhouettes. Like if I want to pop out the shape of this rock, I can just add a little atmosphere behind it. And look at that, you know, you have way more, you know, way more of that, that shape coming through. I think that's a little too much, but let's we'll make it a little more subtle. But that idea. And then we'll get these left background, deep background mountains. You know, maybe we want them to fade almost all the way to the sky color. With atmospheric perspective, which is the term for it, which is as you get further back in space, um, you get more atmosphere. The, the way it's working is uh, the atmosphere is, is is the sky color really coming through on top of your, your mountains or your landscape. So the furthest back mountains or whatever it is, will will pick up more of that color. Um, and the, the contrast will be a, a lot less. So that's why I'm using picking from the sky to add to those background mountains. I think something like that's nice, which gives us a range of, of atmosphere as we go from left to right of, uh, of mountains receding into the distance. You can see what a mess it looks like when, uh, when you see all the layers and, and I, I take away um, these foreground and front midground uh, layers that are that are hiding things. You know, sometimes if you ha if you do a, a complicated map painting that needs to be projected, you're going to want to actually uh, spend some time cleaning this stuff up. But but for this painting, since we're just doing a still image and we're never going to see behind uh, these these layers, we don't need to worry about that. But I am going to. Um, do a little color shift here, just to take down the uh, the warm warm tones happening here. And bring it a little more blue. I 
I'm just lifting the shadows here. Now I'm not matching these mid-ground elements to the background because they are closer to us. So I just want to get to the kind of halfway point. As you add atmosphere, it might might show you uh, where where you need to color correct it further, and the the color correction you're going to be pushing it the whole time. Um, you know, as you change things, you, you might want to bring things warmer, or cooler, or lighter, or darker. I'm gonna change these group names because I uh, must have shifted something around where I got rid of a mid-ground element. No notice how I'm not looking around for layers though. You know, when you have an endless list of layers on here um, and you're wasting so much time just trying to figure out uh, where an element is, you know, re really I know where where it is in Z space so I know which group it'll be under and maybe I have like two or three um, groups here where I just click on off, click on and off. Oh, okay, I know it's here and then I can go into here. And then even when I open this up, I know what all of these layers are. It's That's the speed boost you get from just spending that little bit of time uh, just naming your layers. I'll check again with the levels against my reference image where are these uh, mid-ground tones disappearing. That's right about there. So I'll just bring this up a bit. You know, and because you did match, you know, you when you match all of your elements together, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the times for the mid-ground, let's say, um, I just created this level's adjustment to get the atmosphere where I want it. Uh, well, this is already matching to the right element, so I could just copy this over and, uh, and you know, works for both. You know, and another thing is, is because these levels adjustments do have masks on them, if I want to, um, you know, take away some of the atmosphere, like in these rocks over here, I can just paint the mask with black. And now I have that atmosphere adjustment um, hitting, hitting this back area of the rocks more than it's hitting these foreground rocks. Pretty nice. This is a little messy area that I'll have to clean up. Uh, I might as well just do that now, but um, that's just modifying the mask that we have. And it's about finding those natural blend points. Now, these rocks are a great transition point to be able to then introduce the next element.
paint a little atmosphere there and push that back. And this is, this is starting to, uh, to come together. I want to take out some of the contrast in this ground as we go further back. So I'm just going to paint with a low opacity right on here. that work in hide the color reference for now and just get this piece working you know with with this levels adjustment too just to to check it as you move your highlights up the far distant elements should disappear before the closer ones and if you're slowly you can almost see the depth coming towards us with this and, uh, and that lets you know that your, your atmosphere is in order. Um, if if your, your darks in the foreground are not as dark as your darks in the background, then, then you know you gotta fix that. Like right here, these, these rocks should be darker than this mid-ground, so I know that I'm gonna have to darken all of this up. I can see here that these colors aren't matching. There's a little too much yellow in these shadows, so I'll just push a little more blue in here. So here I'm not adding atmosphere to this front middle ground piece. I'm darkening it. So. Again, just naming my levels adjustment so that I know what it's doing. And I'll actually have that fade off as we get a little further away from us. And this, uh, this element right here, I really like this element, um, but I don't want to see this reflection or this water underneath. So I'm just going to like add a layer here and just paint this, just to just cover that up with just black. You know, it'll fade off into the shadows, so you shouldn't see it. Uh, here you do a little too much, so uh, I'll just make sure that even when... Um, even when you crank the the values of it, that uh, that it's not noticeable or looks natural. That's a pretty good base. And now I'm going to go in and and really hit it with much heavier atmosphere because I do. Uh, you know, this kind of gives us a natural fall off and just brings it into depth. Um, I'll show you kind of what we had before was this, and now we've kind of pushed things back into their space. But now we can, we can even go further with that and emphasize the atmosphere. And then this can just be just soft brush strokes going in. I'll 
I'll just tone down the opacity of this. Something like that just really pushes it back. I'll just call this Midground Atmo, put it in my Midground folder. Same thing with the background. G Atmo, and then here I'm gonna give a nice bright kind of upward atmosphere happening in these uh, in these background mountains, just to emphasize the silhouettes happening everywhere else. And one of the things that that atmosphere did is it, it kind of killed my highlights, right? Because it's just painting a solid color right on top. And we can help that and fix that by just turning these atmosphere layers to lighten. You see what that did? Brought back my highlights back here. And that means that this layer is only going to show up on top of tones that are darker than it. So it's going to let the highlights shine through like that. That's a really nice trick, um, just if you want to keep those, keep those uh, pings of light, which I, I do want to keep those. And on top of that, I want to add more of those. Um, so as soon as I, let me get a, a, a little more atmosphere happening over here. And now we can play with adding those pings of light. I'm gonna start with this background mountain because it already has some of it and I really like it and I wanna bring more of it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab kind of these, this color, this warm tone that's going on here. Uh, I'm just gonna paint where I want these highlights to hit. Maybe a little up here. And then we're gonna use that blend if trick. Uh, you can also use it for highlights. Uh, you know, if any value is uh, darker than this, uh, it'll show through. Um, but we're, we're gonna stick with just uh, blending it out of the shadows. I think something like that gives us some nice pings. And we can either hit soft light on here. You can see without it and with it, those, those light pings we're getting. Uh, or if you really wanna push it, just hit screen and then you can tone down the opacity a bit. I'm gonna go back to this color reference and see what colors, you know, we're getting way more red and, and yellow in here, which I can just do a levels adjustment on, on this color and bring in red. And some yellow. And get that kind of working. I don't like how much it's affecting these areas, so I'll just erase out of there. And you can always paint you know, I can even grab grab here and paint, paint more of this where I want it. Just name that add highlights. We'll do the same thing down here with these mid-ground elements. And sometimes if you if you need more uh, more more range on it. Uh, this is another great trick that you can do. 
I'm just copying the original. I'm gonna just create a new layer, select both of those and control E to merge it down. So now I just have this on a separate layer. Now here I'll go to blending options and at the top of here is this layer versus underlying layers. And what this is doing is uh, rather than depending on the brights and darknesses of everything underneath it, it's the brights and darknesses of this layer. So if I take this down, it's only going to keep the highlights of this layer. So now we have something like that. And now I can create, uh, you know, I can color correct just the highlights up here. Keep in mind though, if, if you are doing this, if you crank the highlights of, of this layer up, um, you're changing what's gonna blend. So one of the ways you can prevent that is just merge this layer. And now it's actually, uh, you know, the, the blending options are gone, it's baked in, and this actually has transparency just in it now. So now we can do whatever we want with these highlights without changing how it's blending. You know, if we wanna crunch them down or, or bring, them, bring them up. And I'll create a layer mask on this so that I can control the direction of that light. Maybe I only want it hitting those top edges. I'll just make it subtle, just something to, to tie it in. And I'll just use that same method with these rocks. I'll merge it. Just get the highlights coming through. Now this one's a little trickier because it has a different direction of light, um, but that's fine. We can we can work with that. You know what what we are getting out of this is we're getting the texture and the the crevices of these rocks. And I'll merge, I'll bake that in, or merge it down. get those colors matching. And now create a layer mask. And now I can just paint in the directionality of that light. You might not want to use such a soft brush because really you don't want that that really soft highlight there is a strong light source happening here so use a little harsher of a brush but this just comes down to, to painting painting light where you want it and the kicks where you want it
like I want to give this little uh, jut, jutting rock a little kick here. Just paint it right in. A little too much happening here. So you can you can use that. That's one way that you can you can get highlights in here. Uh, another way is is just adding a levels adjustment, getting that value that you want out of there. And then I'm just going to Control A and delete so that we fill that mask with black. And now we can just paint the layer mask in where we want it. I'll make this a little brighter. I don't want to lose those details, so I'll, I'll just adjust those mid-tones as I'm making it brighter to, to keep the, the contrast happening in those areas. And you can also, I'll throw a hue saturation underneath. And if you press Alt, you can drag a layer mask over. So it's replace layer mask. And you just copied your, your mask over. So you don't need to mask things out twice. Another thing, this is a great time where you can use different brushes. I don't, I don't even know what most of my brushes are. I just kind of collected them over the years. So. Uh, and I usually don't really use, I don't really pay attention to them that much. I just grab something that has a little texture um, and then I'll just use that to, to add a little texture when I'm painting in highlights. Just to break it up a bit. I know this highlight color seems off, but uh, you know we can go back and adjust all of that. You know, usually you can grab lighting information from from the elements that you're using. It's just these rare cases where there's, um, you know, it's just coming from a different direction or there's just no light source in there. But usually when I'm looking for photo reference, I'm trying to find photo reference that has consistent lighting. I think this, uh, this levels adjustment is actually working a little better than trying to grab anything from the image, though. Actually, I'll paint some of this lighting hitting the ground now. And this is a great way to show directionality is just painting in light to create shadows, um, especially like the cast shadows from these rocks. We can just ping some lights in, in this ground and it'll feel like it's the, uh, it's the shadow being cast from, from here. Something like that. I'm 
I'm actually gonna put that behind the atmosphere. Cool. So this next one, this one we should be able to get a lot of, uh, uh, you know, we'll probably end up doing the same thing just because the, uh, the lighting direction is also coming, coming from a different place. Uh, another thing is you can use, uh, I just copied that lighting levels adjustment over um, just to use it as a base but you can also use the blend if options with levels adjustments. So see here, now this level adjustment is only hitting the highlights. Now I can delete the mask and paint in those light hits where I want it but still keep those insets and grooves in these rocks. Something like that. Here's a great example. This area right here has such a perfect lighting direction that, you know, it's pretty easy to, uh, here, I'll get rid of this, this brush. It's pretty easy to get to just pump those highlights up and, and just get them matching. Um, I'll just actually fill the layer here. And then blending options. Take take down those shadows. And just hit soft light on there. You can just duplicate that too a couple times if you want. And to even hit like a, you know, a levels adjustment, bring a little more warmth into them. Um, and even do a layer mask and, you know, feather it out so that it's, it's hitting that edge more than it's hitting the, the flatter parts. Just quick ways to, to emphasize that lighting. See what that did? It's pretty nice. This piece is really bugging me now because everything is getting so warm and that's just staying so cool. Um, but maybe that's a great opportunity to fix that with, with adding that warm light hitting it. That helps a little, but we'll probably still just go back to that levels adjustment and, and take out some of that, that cyan in there. So, you know, as it's just going through all of this and seeing what's missing and where you need to add things. Uh, Another thing that's that I, I do want to do to this, um, along with adding little kicks of light here and there, is I want to get these god rays kind of coming in behind here just to make it look a little more epic. Just getting these kind of light hits happening. 
And that's kind of, that's part of the atmosphere. Tone that down just a little. And then with the God rays, I also wanna get a little bit more of a vignette having us kind of emerging from uh, from the darkness and, and then revealing this, uh, this Rocky Mountain range. And these are, you know, these are the, the things you just do right on top of every, every, all the layers. I want to tone down this ground a bit as well. Now I want this ground to blend between you know this area up to here. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna paint an adjustment right on top, and then I'll spread it out through all the layers. I'm just gonna darken it all just a bit. Probably set this to soft light. Lighten up these little shadow areas that are just getting a little too crunched. And now I'll just copy that to all the layers that uh, that need it. Is this not one of them? So at this point, you know, it, it, this is when it, it becomes just about how much time and detail you want to put into it. It's just going in and painting all the little lighting and detail, uh, you know, where you want to get those light hits, uh, how you can blend these elements together better, uh, and, and really just, uh, just taking it the rest of the way. And, and what, what that means is just making it as seamless as possible and making it as beautiful as possible. Uh, it, it's just a lot of pushing and pulling. Like I think the atmosphere, now that I added those god rays, is maybe a little too, uh, little too strong. So I'll just kind of tone those down, um, bring back in a little bit more of those background mountains, um, and then uh, you know what what I would probably do next is kind of fix up this ground area, um, and, and these kind of foreground areas that I haven't spent as much time on, and then probably spend a little more time on. Uh, lighting these rocks together. Um, but I, but these are all the tools that I'm using. These are all parts of the process. So um, I'll probably spend a bit more time just kind of getting lost in it and, and refining it uh, and, and then kind of show you where I land. But, uh, but it's all using the same tools that we've covered. <laughs> 